Could you all tell me a little bit about the character that you play in Skins and just a couple of their character traits? Um, from last year, and they've carried, it's sort of carried on to this year, Nick's uh, emotionally unstable. I think there's a lot of issues that he shies away from resolving because he's too scared or because no one's helping him. And uh, this year he looks towards drugs to help him with that, uh, which is another sort of mask he puts on. Um, but he's very, again, he shows his selflessness. He's, he, this, is, this isn't in any way related to me, but uh, Nick as a character, I believe, is really quite selfless and, and does things for others before actually fending for himself. And, uh, and, that's, and that's actually a negative thing to an ex extent when you've got problems that you need to face and actually you're too busy sorting out, actually, namely these two's like, influencing him massively um, and, and tearing him apart. Uh, but he's still that sort of selfless uh, boy, sort of strong, uh, attempted hero. You know, he, he wants to be there for people um, and doesn't doesn't doubt his um, his efforts in doing so. So it's uh, it's Nicky, Nicky Lebel. Uh, uh, Matty uh, was a kind of this mysterious enigma. The sort of brooding, uh, fairly boring at a party, I think. He sort of would sit in the corner and, and survey. It's a boyerism, as opposed, it? Yeah, slightly, slightly bizarre <laughs> guy. Anyway, he's sort of, he's sort of uh, I think the, the last series was very f formative for his personality and but I think, that, crucially, this series, he becomes a 3D human being, as it were, you know, and, and he, he, there, there, he, there was a big defense uh, and facade that he, um, that he had um, last time, and in, the, in this, this one, it's sort of all gone due to, a, you know, various events along the way, and, and it's actually, I think, quite good for him because he's no longer, you know, he hurts now and he sort of fears. So that's that's. Um, I think Frankie. Frankie is a. She's quite unusual in the way that she looks at things and that her reactions. Uh, the way she thinks about stuff is quite different to, I guess, most people her age. Um, and it, in many ways is kind of beyond her years and is very like mature, and, and in other ways is incredibly naive. And that, that kind of affects the things that she goes through, because the things that she's experiencing are very normal teenage girl problems. Um, but it's the way that she kind of understands them and the way she reacts to them that makes her quite uh, unique, I guess. Um, and yeah, she's really, I think she's just quite scared and quite confused and doesn't really know what the world wants from her and what she's capable of giving it. Um, and there's a lot of people who are making a lot of demands from her. and. And that kind of builds up a lot of frustration over the series, and she just needs to find ways to vent that. Um, and, you know, sometimes actually venting those emotions aren't helpful either. Mm. Well, I've asked, I've asked everybody else this, and I'm sure it's a question you've heard countless times, but are there any similarities between you and your characters that you can see when you're playing them or when you're reading the lines? Do you think, yeah, I would possibly react in the same way, or would that just be quite terrible because you know your, your three characters in particular are quite you know they've got quite heavy storylines they're the ones that kind of deal with the big emotional problems yeah I, I, it's weird but every time I read it or I read it's Nick and I and I and I, uh, I, I perform as Nick I feel entirely for him or as him uh, you know if, if, if the sign that's really meant to rile him up I, it won't meet you know, I won't be sitting there thinking, "What's upset me in my life that I can put into this scene?" It's actually I genuinely just feel for him. And um, if, if 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 there's something that really winds Nick up or upsets him, then I'll either be furious or I'll be in tears, but purely because of him. And I think that's 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 that shows that there's similarities there. But it's hard to hard to pinpoint um, certain features. You know, I think there's a similarity in, in the fact that we've grown with 
them. So as you play them and as you learn more about them, just as, as much as you guys watch them and learn about them. But um, I mean, he's so, so, he's, it, it, it shocks me how he cannot think about maybe being a bit more selfish or just doing things a bit smartly. He is naive and, and he's, he's not, I, I like, I don't, I don't, there's vague similarities in the sense of like, I like to shy away from issues and try and, I'm not great at, at jumping right into them and being one of those sort of go-getters in, 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 a, in a, right, let's solve everything now way. I try to, like, if there's a dark issue that I have to deal with, I try and find ways of, you know, appeasing that by staying away and letting it sort of play its course. So the similarities there, but he's, I'm, everyone has to be a little bit more selfish than him. Uh, I am, I'm, I, you've got to fend for yourself at some point. So there's, there's differences too. There's so many, there's so many differences, but, uh, Similarities too, more differences than similarities, I think, with Nick and me. Um, I mean, I, I'd say that there were bound to be countless similarities between whatever character you're playing and the person you are, especially in a show like this, probably m mostly in a, sh in a show like this, where we were cast as... 17 year olds, 16 year olds with mostly uh, relatively little experience uh, as actors and, and that, that you know it's not necessarily a bad thing at all but I think we were probably cast on our um, on a lot of the faculties of our own personalities that's not to say we're the same people at all but you know it's not it's not so much you read a line that belongs to your character and say oh, that's something I'd say. It's more that the other way as your character develops uh, because of the nature of the show, how it's written and how it's produced, you you know, the boundaries are blurred between the, the, the two people, the character and the, the, the person. It's slightly tailored for you. You know, as as it progresses people start to gauge what what you bring forth easily and what you can uh, and how like if there's a speech it's sort of it's not I mean obviously it's it's entirely based on what the character needs to do at that time for the storyline but it's 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 in a, in a way tailored to the performer and um, and that's where similarities come you know they, they they cast us on that sense of we like what they've got as normal human beings it was really strange casting because it was sort of you really have to be yourself and that's what they like in you you know like some of the guys that we need one of the guys. Um, someone just looked at him and just went, I, he, I know him, I, I know him, I've, I've written him, and this works, and just sort of straight away went, um, you fit. So it's sort of, it's a, it's a, it's a relationship, it's a tailoring. You know. um, yeah, I, I guess I do have certain uh, similarities. I think a lot of the things that she experiences this series in particular are things that I've experienced, you know, relationships that she gets into and the way they affect her and kind of the strength of her feelings for some of the other characters um, and, and consequently the, you know, kind of the amount of pain when bad things happen within those relationships I think is something that I can relate to, and I think most girls my age can relate to as well. Um, I think the, the differences lie in that Frankie doesn't always respond to things in the way that I would. Um, so, you know, she, she might um, have a very strong love for somebody, and yet she wouldn't allow herself to feel it. And um, that happens uh, in one of the relationships, definitely, that she gets into, where she's... And, and, and actually in, in the relationship with Matty as well, where she's kind of pushing them away, even though actually what she really wants is to be close to them. Um, and I think it's simply because she, she doesn't really know how to be in relationships. And, uh, and she's scared because people keep leaving her. Hi. And at the end of series five, the, the, the group as a whole were quite friendly, I suppose. They kind of resolved a lot of differences and started getting on for once. But where does series six pick up? 
you know, what, what do we see right from the off? Is that how it is, or obviously they're going to throw in some conflict? I think, if, I think if anything, it starts off as stronger. I think, I think it's so semi-cemented by the end of eight, for some, yeah. I think uh, last year it was a, a conclusion, but it wasn't a, a, an entire one. It was a, I was about to do a, a Gervais. Think about the pie, um, which I won't. Do. Um, but there's um, they're sort of semi-cemented in that friendship, and the, the bonds are forming. But they've had a great summer together, I think. Most of us, anyway, have had a really good. Like Nick's certainly more 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 cemented in the group than he was last year. I think he was sort of one of the rank outsiders. Um, Frankie's definitely fitted in a lot more. Um, Matty's definitely become more edgy. All three of us have. I think the group sort of, and and it's there's even little things like. A perfect example would be like sort of the first episode, one of the scripts. Nick would say something completely ridiculous, and people wouldn't go, "You're such a." They just go typical Nick, or Minnie would say something really arrogant or vain, and we just go. It would, the group wouldn't go, "Oh, like what's wrong with you?" Just be typical Minnie because we've come to grow to like that in a way. And that was in one of the. It didn't may not have planned out in the actual episode, but that was when the starting scripts came in. We all started to see that there is a. We're starting to mould, but actually there's. You can't patch over cracks entirely, and, and it takes a serious situation or something to catalyze an entire breakdown of it. And that's what happens, because by the end, it's, it's really quite a different story. And obviously, you're, you're in Morocco, you know, you're saying that they have this good summer together. They, the characters all go on holiday, but you filmed in Morocco as well. Yeah. How was that working over there? Did you manage to turn any of it into a bit of a holiday? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was yeah, like a yeah, holiday, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it was more holiday than it was work for most of us. Yeah, considering we enjoy our job, if anything, it was, yeah, it was just a holiday. I mean, I, I, I would actually prefer to work and film than, than sit by a pool for 10 days, because, well, you're sitting by the pool and scene. So, um, no, it was, a, it, was, it's a, it was a totally, like, different world to work in, um, but a nice one, and it's an it was an incredible experience, um, and it like spurred us on to come up, with, you know, sort of push ourselves a little bit and come up with things that we might not do and experiment. And it was a little bit more free running, you know, free sort of manipulate things a little bit more, and you had a little bit more control because it was a tighter crew. It was uh, language barrier wasn't even that tough, you know. It was yeah, it yeah. was nice. It was a really good, really good couple of weeks. I understand you went quad biking while you were there on a day off. Yeah, I, oh, I didn't. No, I thought, stay far away from that. I actually, I actually, uh, I actually I flipped. I've heard the flipping story. What did you flip? Really badly flipped one as well, as in literally had no idea how far it had gone, and it was scary. It was weird because you just, so I just sort of stood up and went, right, well, got to flip that over and catch up now. It was just like the most, and like because everyone was just going at ninety, bombing it over like sand dunes and ridiculous, ridiculous like things we were doing. Because you were wearing the, helmets. Yeah, yeah, we had helmets, but it was like it was just like they wouldn't have let us do that in the UK. They would not have had. We would not have had that much fun if it was in the UK. And we're over like massive sand dunes with like really steep drops, and everyone was just bombing it, and it was like. Yeah, that was a really good laugh. That was one of the benefits of being somewhere where it's a little bit more lax, you know. Weren't you told, though, by the producers not to do anything yeah. that would at all potentially you know what, endanger actually, your actually, I, I can entirely come back at them and, and tell them to stop it, because um, we're riding 15-year-old motorbikes for, for the storyline's sake. They've gone and bought 10-pound motorbikes, or, or whatever they, you know, we're not going to discuss finance. Um, and make us ride down hills with no brakes and my gear change doesn't work on the bike so it starts flipping out. I've got an extra on my back at a, like a 60 degree angle hill with a cliff barrier with, no, uh, with, a, with, a, with a 100 meter drop cliff with no barrier on the side of a town. And no helmets. Like, and no helmets. Protection, yeah. Like, so you're telling me not to quad bike for the sake of the show, I'm allowed to do that. And it actually, actually came off quite dangerously in the end. It's saying like, the last scene of the... The last shot of the series was me falling off or flipping the bike. So I nearly died in Morocco. It was just how. Um, I was in the car with uh, Joe, who plays Luke, and uh, he thought he'd do, you know, some stuntman driving. Uh, and Joe. the car, there was like a concrete. I don't really know what it was. But you could feel the edge of the car scrape along the wall where he just managed to swerve in time. Um, that was quite scary. I don't, I don't trust this driving. Oh, I was, yeah, I was, it, was, it was really scary. And it was one of those things where you go, right, I know this is going to go wrong now because I nearly flipped the last time. The, the, the gears were changed from like three to five without me asking. And I've got an extra on the back. And like, we had to time it because we had no brakes. 
uh, that once before we get round the building, they've already called action. So we're sitting on the 69 degree. It was awful. And I'm just going, this is going to go wrong. This is going to go wrong. This is going to go wrong. We get down the bend. We pass the no barrier cliff. We're bombing up past the camera. We turn up a hill and the bike just flips out and I scraped off all the skin on my foot and, uh, and a big chunk out of my knee. And I broke, luckily I broke the lovely girl's fall who was on my back, so she wasn't too bad and we didn't get sued. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, she got me right in the chest. And this was all so, in Morocco as well? This was all in Morocco, it was a final take of the so whole job. Definitely like a, like a holiday then in some way. You nearly died, you... And someone gets hurt on a scooter, like you do in Thailand in the gap year, like the amount of Thailand scooter stories. Yeah, it was one of those, it was one of those good old fashioned holidays with a broken swimming pool. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm expecting some of this to kind of come out in, in the first episode then with the you know dramatic car chases and it's very it's, it's very cinematic yeah. as a result, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was it was like a mini movie in itself. Yeah, and um and, and the people that worked on it as well. I mean, Vic Armstrong. I think you could see it as like a standalone, you know. I, I like a, just a one part, one part story. No, um. Yeah, it will come across. It will come across. It was, and and we're working in hot conditions, and we're tired, and we're you know the, all all these factors came into play. We were like very much at the elements. The one day that we want a bright color, a bright sky, and uh, to to ride these motorbikes through the desert. The opening shot of the trailer actually turns into a sandstorm. So like we were completely at the at the ripple of the elements, and 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 we had to free run it, which meant that what you get on camera is that the excitement of that too. You know? So how can the rest of the series top this first episode then? Because if it's, you know, it's very it will. Oh, oh, it will. You know, there's, the writers this year have been very, very good. I think each episode will have a very different feel um, and a different kind of theme. But basically the first episode kind of sets up the series. And it's all about how each character deals with what happens in the first episode in a very different way and kind of comes to terms with it and does what they have to do to be all right again I guess and uh, and yeah and some of those ways that they deal with it are quite extreme yeah there's uh, there's a lot to actually I actually think that it might not be the most intense set but I think well actually there's certainly things in a lot of episodes that really hit hard and that yeah. make it stand alone itself so like don't I, I, we don't want people to think that like F1 is just the be all and end all of well, the show. The, it the, really like, kicks like off the, so much more. We've been saying, actually, it's, it's cleverly, I think, the beginning of the end of the series, interestingly, which is the first episode. It, you know, it cleverly and quite uh, subtly, I think, sets up <coughs> what comes after it. As I think probably an opener should do. Yeah, which is um, no stretch timid, is it? No, uh, no. But that's the interesting thing: is this, this, you know, huge event in in the first episode is, um, cat, you know, is catastrophic and 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 huge in its own right. But then, what it does to the series and all of the relationships and yada yada yada. Is actually more, you know, even more potent and pertinent than, than the event itself. So. And as you say, it's the kind of beginning of the end of the series from episode one. I suppose it's therefore the beginning of the end of your tenure on Skins, as it were. You know, yeah. because you've been there for two series, and then you move on. I mean, how does that feel to know that it's kind of coming to a close, and you probably won't be working together in such close proximity again? How's it, how's it going to be when it all comes to an end? I think it's going to feel right. Actually, I think I, we're all. We've all discussed them all a little bit, you know, we, we really did try and... But we grew with these characters as the characters grew in, 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 in a writing and screen state. Um, and we sort of lived with them for those two years. And especially after the first year, we knew we were coming back to go into those skins again, you know. And um, But it's at the same time, it's one of those feelings of sort of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. since it's, it, we left it at the right time and it's kind of... Not like we had a choice, but it's, it's the, you know, we're all... I, I am at least, I think we all discussed to an extent content in that sense of you know, it's right that we go now and we leave it and we leave those characters at that point yeah. seems so like a good and what, bit of sweet kind of, what's kind of next I suppose because you're all incredibly young you know the oldest person is what 19 or something like that yeah yeah me and Leia so you kind of got to this point where you've had a phenomenal entrance into the world of acting 
you know, really good first gig, but you're still at an age where you can go, well, I don't necessarily want to stay in that. But is it something that you think you've kind of grown to love so much after doing Skins that it's what you'd want to carry on doing? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I think most of us wanted to act before. Yeah. And still do, I think, most people in it. But I think it's tricky, actually, because, you know, we're all teenagers, and it, uh, we've, we've been in this relatively successful television program um, at a very early stage, and you, the tendency, I think, because we are very young, is to think, oh, like it's like make it or not at all if in the next year two years you know or or nothing's ever going to happen and the truth is you know you're 18 19 years old most 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 people who you know ha are lucky enough to do well in this incredibly sort of insecure business are sort of you know begin at 27, 28, yeah. to actually Morgan start and to um, garner some sort of uh, Morgan, when did Morgan notoriety start? or whatever. When did Morgan know. start? 15? Was he 50 years old? Probably quite old. I mean, like Liam Neeson was a forklift truck driver for Guinness. Uh, Bradley, oh, Cooper really, was, was Bradley Cooper was 36 before the hangover and the big break there. Uh, problem is, you, you know, don't so want to hear problem. that. You don't want to hear that. Then you know, you want to. You, I'm, I'm impatient in that sense. I'm going to work until I until I know that I can never work again. And if it doesn't work, then I won't. But it wasn't a sort of situation where I came onto Skins thinking, do I? Don't I? And then I became to love it. I sort of grew to love it. I've always wanted to uh, before Skins and. Um, and like I, it was, it was uh, you know, it wasn't sort of a take a risk, let's go down to the open casting and see how it goes. I, I really, I really did want to act. So um, hopefully, could have gone continue. either way, you know. Could yeah. either have consummated your desire, yeah. or could have um, turned you off completely. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Skins as a series, you know, it's been running, going into the sixth one now. It's kind of entered into the vernacular of. British teenagers in things like skins parties. So I, I know someone who went to a house party and they said it was like a skins party, but people just people just know what that is. If you know what I mean? It's all about the kind of you know excess and yeah. sex, drugs, rock and roll, whatever. But what are your ideal nights out as a person, not necessarily as your character? I actually sitting in my room, writing poetry, reading, having. Is Poirot still on the background? Red wine, yeah, with Marvel Marvel. on in the background. You know. um, I, I actually, we, we had this discussion on New Year's about like, oh, but this place is going to be, that place is going to be great. It entirely depends on who you're with, actually. And we've got, I, we, I've had nights where I've gone to the place I just really wouldn't ever spend any time in. But entirely because of, because of the people that you're with just makes it so actually I, I can't really sort of say what my favourite night are, but actually the spontaneous ones are the ones that you don't expect to go past any sort of stretch and they become just this wild journey from, actually I like to travel on nights, I like to move and, um, and it's nice to stay in one place at points but when you're on one of those those nights, you know, just there's like jumping about and you get to, you've get you got something to go there and then as a group it's always good, so spontaneous sort of traveling ones. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree with what Sean said, I think, I, I don't really mind where I am. To an extent. Yeah, you don't want to hang out and crack down, so. Well, well you know, tempting, tempting as it sounds. Wow. Um, it really depends who you're with. Um, so, yeah, as long as I'm with my friends, um, I will have a good night. And the last question for as long as it's going to ever run for, Skins is always going to have those critics who say it's. it's it's over the top, it's sensationalism, it's not like real teenagers. But what, what would you say to those critics? Well, I think they need to stop being so naive. Um, inevitably, this show, or any show, is going to be heightened for dramatic purpose. It has to. But the fundamental issues that are at hand are ones that kids are dealing with on a daily basis. That's why it's got such a cult following. I mean, we understand, like, there's a lot of extremism this year. But it's entirely relevant, and that's what's really, you know, even working on it surprised me. It wasn't sort of we need to chuck in a mad house party there, or we need to chuck in a fight there. It all fits. Well, it's like it's like a, a, a dramatic technique that goes back to Chaucer, you know. Yeah, you've I mean, got to have a little bit of. You take something true, truish, and and real, and you heighten it and heighten it and heighten it until 
it becomes enjoyable drama, you yeah. know. And I so think I think anyone that says it seems no, we're not. We're not, so it's I not think endorsing anything. You know, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's 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 funny to go. Well, this is high end. You're watching TV. Of course, it's going to be a drama. Oh, it's so drama drama. It's a drama. You know that you you have that they have to embrace that. The states were so uh, unforgiving in that sense with the PTA, the P or the P PTC or whatever. So, and I think that's just their refusal as Americans in that sheltered lifestyle to believe that their kids are capable of anything like this. We've all got those stories of teenagers and the messed up nights that you've had and you or, or had on. You know, everyone has. Freshers is like two weeks of mayhem everywhere, so um, it's part of culture, and it's just it's going to be heightened. It has to be. It can't. So you're going to have two guys sitting in a hotel room like having a spliff. Like there's not going to be enjoyable to watch at all. But you're going to go to a crazy like rave and 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 have all these like amazing parties and music and upcoming bands playing. Everyone's having. You know that's what people want to watch. Some so. of the other guys said, "Why does no one ever criticise misfits for this? They've got superpowers." <laughs> yeah. Which is yeah. yeah, or like, or like they go back in time exactly. and single-handedly destroy the world by letting Hitler win. I think we should address them. Does that happen in misfits? Doesn't isn't that when well, they no, and they they leave uh, supposedly they leave a mobile phone. I haven't seen that episode yet. In the past, or no, I don't no, know, no, someone tells us they're leaving a mobile phone and Hitler <laughs> finds it, and uh, the Nazis take over the world. Right. Yeah. Judge the zombies, because that's a heightened, unrealistic thing, isn't it? <laughs> Judge any zombie movie, too. The fundamental reason that there's zombies in it. Like we're <laughs> I'm just getting the some, uh... Just having like a... Oh, sorry, was just that a... Just a really casual <laughs> sip of a drink. Just like that. It's just some subtle promotion for the glass over to me. It's cool. <laughs> Whichever's your best side. Just try and look, try and look, try and look give a snigger when it's something that I'm saying, as if we're having a really in-depth conversation yeah. about something really phenomenally interesting. Like this question is incredibly tough to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. You're sitting there going, can you repeat that? I really yeah. need yeah. to understand. I'm sorry, I'm kind of stunned. <laughs> <laughs>